So all of the designs that we've seen so far are examples of in-order processors. And these processors have the property that you have a pipeline, you have instructions entering the pipeline in program order. And these instructions essentially flow through the pipeline. And you never have one instruction overtaking an instruction that is before it. So ultimately, they all finish in program order and they commit or leave the processor pipeline in program order, right? So when one instruction in this pipeline gets stalled, every instruction that comes after that instruction also gets stalled right behind that first instruction. Okay, so that's what an in-order processor is. And you can see that this is clearly inefficient because when you have one instruction stalled, it's possible that the instructions after that don't depend on that first instruction. And so it should be possible to do useful work while you're waiting for that first instruction to finish, right? But an in-order processor doesn't allow you to do that because once it stalls one instruction, it stalls everything else behind that instruction as well. Okay, so I'm going to introduce this notion of an out-of-order processor that adds more hardware to this basic processor that we've designed so far. And that support allows you to do multiple instructions in parallel and allows you to not be limited by you know one instruction being held up because of dependencies. But before I describe that design, let me continue this in-order model and add a few things to it that move us closer to an out-of-order processor without actually being an out-of-order processor. So here's an example. This is still going to be my in-order pipeline. What I've done here is I've extended that basic five-stage design that we'd seen before and extended it in a practical way, basically adding support for more kinds of instructions. So our earlier five-stage pipeline was only capable of doing integer adds, loads and stores, simple branch instructions, and so on. So we still have that same support. So you have an instruction fetch stage, you have an instruction decode, register, read stage that all happens in that second cycle. And then ultimately you have a data memory stage and a register write or a register write back stage. And in between, you can take one of four possible paths. You can go along this integer unit, which is what an integer add would do or a load or a store instruction would do. Or you could go along this path, which does floating point addition, or along, along this path, which does multiplication for both floating point and integer values, and then a divider unit, again, for both integer or floating point. And you'll see that each one of these stages or each one of these paths takes a different amount of time. So doing an integer add takes a single cycle or a single stage. Doing the floating point addition takes four stages. Doing the multiply over here takes seven. And doing the divide, let's say, it takes about 25 cycles. Now, when you have instructions going along these possible paths, you can have instructions completing out of program order, right? So you could have an instruction over here that does a divide. And then you could have a second instruction that does an integer add. Right, so the divide is writing something into, let's say, dollar one, and this add is dealing with, you know, dollar two and dollar three, right, and writing the result into, let's say, dollar four. So these two instructions don't depend on each other, and so you have the divide that flows through the pipeline first. So in cycle three, it moves from the decode stage into this divide unit, and coming right behind it is the add, and since the add does not depend on the divide it can move onto this integer execute unit in cycle four. Okay, and so basically you have these two independent instructions that are taking two different paths and executing in parallel, right? So while this divider is going through these many stages here, the integer add goes through this one stage unit. Since that finishes so fast, it gets to this next stage faster than the divide. That's essentially the integer add overtaking the divide operation. And so it gets to this register write stage before the divide operation, and it is able to modify the contents of $4. And then sometime later, about 20 cycles later, this divide finishes, gets here, and then updates the contents of $1. So even though these two instructions entered the pipeline in program order, even though they went through decode in program order and started executing on their functional units in program order, they end up finishing out of program order. And that's not necessarily the best thing because as a programmer, if you are stepping through your program, you see your register values being modified in a different order than the one that you intended. And so in this case where there were no dependencies, you know, this is acceptable, but not great. But there could be other instances where there are dependencies and such reorderings can cause quite a bit of chaos. 
So the usual way to handle this is to say that when instructions finish, they get buffered in a temporary unit here or in a temporary storage unit over here. So as you finish, you kind of put in your results in here. And these results are made permanent. That means these values are copied into registers $4 and $1 based on the initial ordering of instructions. So you finish, you write your result over here, and then when the divide finishes, it's going to copy its temporary result into $1. And then after that, the add gets to make its result permanent in $4. And this ensures that the order in which the register values get modified is exactly the same order that the programmer intended, right? So this is still an in-order issue processor, but you will see that it has this element of out-of-order instruction completion. And with this buffer over here, what we've introduced is an in-order commit process, which says that you may complete out-of-order, but everyone gets to commit in program order. That means in program order, you make your values permanent. That is, that's when you move your values from some temporary storage unit into the actual register that's supposed to hold your result. Okay, and you'll see this similar concept also being applied in our full-fledged out-of-order processor design.